guys, and welcome back to another episode of Total Control with SD Wesker. Now, today is going to be a very, very big episode. Uh, probably the biggest one we've had so far in terms of the magnitude of the matches we've actually got, even though they're friendlies. And there's quite a few things I also want to talk about today. But again, it's going to be quite a match-heavy episode as we prepare for next episode, which I believe is going to be episode 8, the first match of the season. I can't believe we've actually taken a week to do pre-season. And what I even can't believe even more than that is that there's still loads of you actually watching this series. And that, that fills me with joy because I'm having a bloody lovely time. Like, you have no idea how nice it's been to actually feel like when I'm recording and editing stuff, it's worthwhile. And not because Polonia wasn't worthwhile, but because a lot of the time what I was doing with Polonia, I was sat there on processing screens, which meant that, like, I would sometimes have an hour of like not in, in one go but like over the course of a recording session just sat on processing screens which was just wasted time and it sucks because i really wanted to be doing stuff and making content but it, it just the, because of the way things were i couldn't do that but now i feel like every second i record and everything i'm editing is all actually going into making these videos awesome and hopefully the thing we're doing with the database should mean that all saves going forward i should be able to be a little bit a lot more free and hopefully you know with the next rebuilding save in fm20 we'll be able to sign regions from loads more countries because we'll have the cool database trick that we've been using so that is very nice to see and just the fact that people seem to genuinely be enjoying the save is uh that warms my goddamn heart you really aren't planning on it being a long-term series like to the end of fm19 um th the aim was i set myself a task of one season because that way it gave us a beginning and an end and that way i didn't really care how long the season took and you can understand now from the fact that we've taken nearly a week to do pre-season that it's going to be a long series no matter how long the actual series is. I'll judge it based on who's actually watching, because after all, I do still have to make this uh, sustainable for the channel itself, essentially. So if people are still watching and really enjoying it towards the end, obviously we'll, we could probably continue it till the end of FM, but it's just one of those things, really. Which brings me to my question of the day, because I thought, why the hell not? My question today is, how do you plan your pre-seasons? And I'm specifically now talking about scheduling. We'll talk about training, because I'm curious about that sort of stuff in other videos, but what do you, do you have a set training plan, uh, a set schedule plan that you use when you're doing a preseason? Like, do you do what I do, where you start off with a couple of week games, start to build it up, and then you start alternating, in theory anyway, between, you know, good, bad, worse sort of teams? What is your plan when it comes into preseason? Let me know in the comments. I'll be very interested to hear about that. And also, I said that Mattersburg were a German team, and I don't know why. Um, maybe they're, maybe they're in, uh, in Argentina. Ah, I'll tell you what it was. When I clicked on them, I saw tip three Bundesliga and I didn't think to, I thought for some reason in my head, I thought, oh, that's the third tier in Germany because the three and Bundesliga. But of course, they're actually a top flight team in Austria. So I actually think that the 2-0 victory over Mattersburg is a better result than we gave it credit for. Now, obviously, there's a difference in quality, but I still think that a, a team in the top flight in Austria is probably of a similar, if not better quality than that. So that that's, that's encouraging. And as usual, I got a geographical situation wrong. The first of which is to take a little look at how we can engineer more of those ball over the top type of chances that we created against Welva. Um, and I feel like there's no direct instruction, but what we could do is look at potentially some PPMs that we can give our players that could maybe encourage more situations like that. With strikers, it could be things like beat the offside trap. And I believe there's a couple we could put on wingers and midfielder to create more of those passing opportunities. Tries killer balls, I believe might be like that. So just looking at Gallego, I want to see. So attacking, it's more about movement training, really, isn't it? It's the beat the job side trap more often. But my thing is that David Platt's probably going to tell me that this is not a good idea. Let's see. It won't do him any good at this stage of his career. That's not the one they usually say, but David Platt, why don't you just go with it anyway? I realise that because he's got the best pace or acceleration, it's going to struggle, but we'll, we'll see. But Miero, passing training. I feel like the tries killer balls wherever, whenever possible is probably the one we're looking for. I like that it's given you a bit more context though. It suits good decision makers. I need to learn more about what suits what, but that's kind of, I think, what we need. So we're going to give it a try again. His decisions are 12. It's not like that bad. I just want to see if that could maybe allow us to create more of those opportunities. It would really be better when we have a pacey striker that's going to try and beat the offside trap, like Nilmar or Juan Hernandez particularly. Okay, so Andre Capilean has joined us. Um on trial he's got eight finishing i mean it's, it's just not good is it and he's not fast particularly i mean he's about the same pace as nilmar but he's not got any finishing ability okay so our first match of the season is gonna be on telly so Anderlecht actually play a similar system to us so that could be another we're gonna be going with our the sort of approach that's worked best for us so far as well by the way but i'm gonna be adding these get further forward instructions to these three players here i'm also gonna up the passing directness on gayar so that he might play those balls in behind a little bit earlier i've also had some thoughts from the comment sections and stuff about the idea of upping the um, defensive line a little bit because playing so cautiously actually drops it even further. So we could maybe go back to a normal line of engagement and defensive line and allow us to engage a bit sooner, win a bit more of the ball. Something to think about, perhaps. Okay, I don't know what on earth my assistant has done here. So we don't need match practice and match practice here. 
We'll have like a team bonding session there or something. A defensive shape session in here. And maybe just a recovery session in this one. Just to make sure that we're not overdoing it. Okay, so training session for the coming week, which is much more important right now. It's the one we actually want to sort out. Going to put a chance creation session in here. Uh, we want a bit of a rest the next day, because otherwise it's way too much. There's a bit of team bonding, a few more rests. There's not a lot in between here. Maybe take out this, maybe add a, a late session. Maybe an attacking direct session in the evening here. So Nilmar's trial has finished. Um, I like the guy quite a lot. He is apparently not very balanced and does have a slight injury proneness. Uh, I, might, I might bring him back on another trial. Because I want to see if anything better comes up from our scouting reports. And if no one else is interested in him, I might pick him up on a contract for a one year maybe. Just so that we've got an extra body up there. But I don't want to commit to that yet because it would cost us wages. Okay, so Nilmar's back on trial for another four weeks. I think we'd have to maybe sign him up before the end of the window so we could register him. But it does give us more time to look at him and see what we're going to do. Camacho has now gone to the press. Brilliant. We could have something dodgy brewing here. We've got to be careful how we uh, deal with this. I feel like I'm counting on him to be an important player this season. It could hopefully appease him a little bit. Although that press was devious. Devious, man. Press speculation. Camacho is pleased with Mariano Bravo's comments. Okay, that's a good sign. Because we've got some more contracts that are expiring. Yaya Torre, that's fine to let that expire. Juan Aguilera, he's 32 years old. Defensive midfielder. He actually is not bad there. I don't know why I was concerned about maybe looking for another DM. Because he's actually not bad. He's a leading player for most of the division below. But the question is, how much would he want in wages? 6,200 at the moment. 7,500. Hmm. If I can knock him down to 6,500, then maybe I'd be interested. Okay, he's accepted that. So it basically keeps him on a tiny little bit more money, but it keeps him around for another two years. Acapo, though, is 25, and he's a backup rotation player. He probably would want more money than that, though. And I feel like he's probably going to want about 12. 11. Backup. He's, he would want a backup three-year contract, minimum release clause. I'll offer him 9.5, but only if he lets me put a 3 million release clause in. He's holding fast on the release clause side of things. All right, 9.5 and a 2.7 release clause. Okay, so he's, he's taken less money, um, but and the release clause is not great, but it's still better. Could leave it as a normal win bonus. I could put it higher. It would shave off £600,000 from our transfer budget, but it might provide the morale bonus that we could potentially need over the course of the season. I think I'm going to go for the high win bonus because that generally does cheer players up. We could do with that right now. Absolutely no reaction from the squad. Feels to me like that, that mechanic is just completely broken. Like, I'd like some kind of reaction, at least, you know? So, what do we go with for today? I want to try Nilmar again because... I feel like this is the kind of way we're starting to play now. The other option I did think about in the last game was going more direct with the passing in general, but I might try that for the second half of the game. I'm going to bring Miramon back in today just to see how that goes. And Jose Angel. And of course, Xavi Etcheta. I'm going to keep Yaya Toure in for now, or do I bring Malero back in? You know what, I'm going to bring Malero back into the team again to give him some more game time. Large bench anyway, we can change things around. So they're playing a very similar situation to us, really. We don't know that much about them, though. Okay, we'll go with that for now. This is a much, much bigger test for us. Like, as much as we've played some solid-ish teams, and they're, like, they're a team that should be beating us, really. Players looking motivated. Good. Better. That's more like it, lads. So in our back pocket today, we've got the idea of uh, trying some longer-range passing. That's something we want to have a look at. Um, but for the rest of it, we just want to sort of see how things go. Huampi, nice work driving at them all, all, straight away here. Huampi's going all the way through. Oh, what a bloody goal. We've taken the lead inside 20 seconds against Anderlecht. Huampi there. Mwah, that is some beautiful football. Uh, Miero picks out a lovely little assist here. We got the ball out wide and we got it out there early, but this is insane for Huampi. Goes past one, goes past two, past three, goes past four, and then whips that past the goalkeeper for 1 0 after just 20 seconds into the match. We've got the lead. Good start. They're a much better team than us. We'd expect to have less of the ball. Uh oh. Big defensive needed hit. Great tackle. Out wide for a Muzu. Oh. Um. Well, there's our first goal conceded. That's frustrating because they've we've limited them mostly to long shots so far, and he's just cut inside and bent one there. We were pretty much set, but just didn't do a good enough job. Like when the ball comes to him here, there's not really any danger. Just show him inside. He just cuts inside and he's just able to bend one in the far post. It's a great goal. You can't really argue with the quality of the goal. Maybe we could have closed him down a bit sooner. Malero, the possession's definitely coming back towards us a bit more now. And Muzo, oh, Jose Angel, oh, wow, another good chance created. Miramon. And we really should have done better with that one there, to be honest. Nilmar should have finished. I think we need to close down their wide players, but not mark them. Like, get out there and block stuff. Oh, Whampy again. Ball across and Nilmar! Good stuff again. Much more like it now. We're actually creating chances against them. That's something we've not really been doing much of. Whampy, saved by the goalkeeper. Much, much more like it now. Maybe he could have taken the shot on there. Milero. Whampy. Cut inside. Back for Rivera. Milero. Oh, he's got to find the shot here. 
Gael puts it into the back of the net. We're 2 1 up now against Anderlecht. And look at this three half chances in 25 minutes created against Anderlecht. It's like because they're a better team than what we've been playing against, they're actually trying to play through us a bit more. And as a result, it's creating way more spaces for us to play on the break. And actually, this is just nice football. Nice build up on the edge of the box. Milero gets himself another assist on the night as well. And we're back into the lead again. And I think we thoroughly deserve that. We've been excellent since when we went uh, level. I am very encouraged by what I'm seeing so far. Nilmar, Bolin, cleared away. Rivera brings it down. And he scored another one. Christian Rivera makes it 3-1 to Wesker. Okay. I think we might be on... We're cooking on gas here, lads. 3-1 up in the first half. I know it's only a friendly, but Anderlecht are a much better team than those we've been playing lately. Poor clearance. Rivera does really well to pick this up, and it's a really composed finish from the central midfielder into the bottom corner. 3-1 up now. This is good stuff. Like, the goal we conceded as well was just a really good strike from Amuzu, just like that was, but it's from range. Just have one of our fullbacks just sit on him. Try to really take him out of the game. Because he looks like their key player so far. And if we can try to get him off the ball a bit more, it might drag us out of positions on one wing. But we'll still be pretty solid. Hendricks, over the crossbar again. And, well, Jose Angel, so easy for him. Malero has been an absolute star in the midfield today. He's been controlling this match. Juampi, taking people on. Finds a guy, oh, can he run and get the shot away, maybe? Probably difficult for him. Juampi! Oh, what a piece of play again. Juampi right in there at the back post. Beautiful. I am so endlessly happy with this first half. Juampi, it's Jetta, and saved again. I don't think we're done yet in this match. If we keep playing this well, more chances will come. Um, what we're going to do is today and Sassuolo will both be playing this system and seeing what we can come up with. And then at the start of the next episode, before we get into Bilbao, we're going to have a real deep look at the actual analysis of these two games so we can see what we did right and wrong in them going into the season against good teams. Because this is so encouraging. That much you can really tell. Nilmar. He's not been really on it tonight. Although Gaillar... Oh, and hits the post. Quampy on the rebound. Really nice. Going to try for the final 20 minutes of this match. It's just a normal line of engagement and la normal stuff there. I think it might just allow us to win a bit more of the ball, a bit higher up the pitch. Luisinho, ball in. Rivera could pick this up. Oh, he could look out wide. They've got to. Rivera. Oh, Luisinho. He's got one hell of a cross on him, this lad. Ball in. Gallego, great header. Oh, Capo flying in there. Malero now wins it. Can we maybe find a ball in behind? There is actually potential for an opportunity for one of these passes here. He's found it. Gallego. Ah, not the best. There we go. 3-1 victory over Anderlecht. That, I cannot knock that. We limited them to literally two shots that weren't long shots. They scored one excellent goal and we were just brilliant. Created half, a decent number of actual bona fide chances uh, against a really decent team. Pulled that possession back towards the end as well, which I think really does make a difference. I'm not going to mess with it too much for the Sassuolo game because of how well we played in this first half, but I am so happy with that performance. I know it's only Anderlecht, but to me, that is a really, really encouraging sign. Yes! It's also got me thinking about the fact that they played an inside forward, which was a Muzu, and the reason he was able to get in that position is because he cuts inside. Our narrow back line works really nicely. Uh, in theory, it should work quite nicely for that kind of thing too. But I think if there's an inside forward, that's a player we should press and type mark. But wingers, we should leave them be and let them go out wide because the inside forward is probably not going to be crossing the ball as much. He's the guy they're trying to get it to. Very much on that left-hand side, but we actually had a nice balance of the attacks, to be fair. Passes, they look a bit more, they just look more forward thinking. Oh my God. Look at this for a system. This is some weird stuff, man. So Ezekiel Abila is actually going to be missing for a little while. We haven't actually used him much because he's an attacking mid, so it's not the end of the world. Juan Hernandez, 11 days to three weeks. Oh, it's getting good. Aguilera has signed a new deal, which is nice to see. End of the trial for Kaplan. Not really a problem there. Lizar Rizou is pleased with our progress. Good stuff. Oh, match against uh, Betis has also been chosen for TV. Just going to have some rest and recovery after the game because it's on a Friday, so things have moved around a little bit differently. Acapo has signed a new deal. Tactical briefing. Hmm. We're not scoring goals from outside the area. That is an area that we very much need to just stop shooting from. But that's maybe because we wonder about the work ball into the box. Nope, still nothing. One day. Also, had some folks asking about the whole Polonia stream thing. So it won't be straight away because next week, or the, rather the week after, I'm away for a week. And as a result, I need to use all of next week to actually make videos in the other time I've got to somehow cover that week. So that's going to be really difficult because basically double the amount of stuff just to get it all done so that there's not going to be any gaps in the series. So it'll probably be when I come back from that. So maybe three weeks from now, hopefully when we can actually start doing that. I apologize, but that's just the way it has to be. Toure or Malero? I feel like Malero has earned his place in the team again today, quite frankly. Maybe try Gallego instead of Nilmar today though, just because Nilmar didn't actually impress me that much in the last game. And I want to give Gallego an opportunity. Let me try Luisinho as well and a capo from the start instead. Just to mix things up a little bit for some of these backwards guys. Opposition report. I mean, this is the weirdest ass system, I've got to say. So Masango is their deep-lying playmaker. And boy, is he. Particularly going down the right with Dominica Berardi. Very, very right-sided. Heavily on the right, in fact. Particularly the right-back spot, too. 
Look at this. All their players go into Berardi. They've got an inverted wing back on this left-hand side. So th literally everything is pushing this side. So with that in mind, we're going to go after Masangu. But, and Berardi isn't actually going to start, it would seem. But they'll presumably do the same kind of thing. I actually feel like we do want to press this. Because he's sort of going to behave a bit like an inside forward here. And I think that's something we definitely need to look at. The more we can take Boga out of the game, the better it would seem. Because that seems to be where all of their pressure is going to come through. Same kind of setup as the last game. Might try the change in defensive line uh, like we did last time out again. But we will see. Rivera, look at the space. They're actually allowing a lot of space in the wide areas. And oh my goodness me, we've done it again. Inside 15 seconds to the start of the match. Alex Gaia this time with the goal. Assisted by Christian Rivera. And we lead 1-0 against the Swolo now. Um, This outlet of starting things off very very quickly getting the ball out to Huampi and look at this ball from Rivera lovely stuff but this is an insanely good finish from Gaia he scored a lot of goals for us in preseason from that left hand side it's very interesting to see one nil up already brilliant so you can see where Boga's taken up and he's been marked quite nicely at the moment it's gonna try and cut through it would see oh oh he is a dangerous man even the possession statistic is in our favor at the moment which is saying something oh great ball oh no it's not it's theirs Gallego cuts through it's got Huampi Rivera's got Huampi around the side Huampi's in should be a goal. He should be finishing there. But again, a really good piece of play created there. We look like a decent counter-attacking outfit here. Goes back post. Gallego. Rivera. Oh, what a save from Vitali. No need for an overlap. Gaia's throw. Can he pull it back across? No. Rivera. Stewart options. Luisinho this time. Ball across. Juanpi. Oh. A capo. Ball back post. Gaia. Oh, I'm flabbergasted with how well we're playing in this match so far. Shetta. Saved by Vitali and it's cleared away again. Now free kick from Juanpi. Oh, and he's put it straight in the back of the net. It's 2-0 after 12 minutes. Oh, I'm feeling so good about the way this season could potentially go. If we can play like this against teams sort of in the mid-table uh, of La Liga. I, I know, again, it's pre-season, but this is so encouraging, man. Capo digs one out. It's a bit too deep. Oh, it's going to come down to Gaia. Back for Luisinho. Ball across. And Gallego's header is saved by Vitali. No overlap on the other side, but I'm all right with that for now. Malero is going to shoot, you'd feel. And a great save again from Vitali. Ball across. Cleared away. Rivera. Breakaway chance now. Gaia, this is where we really flourish. He's got to look across the pitch, though. He's not. Oh, yes, he has. Huampi, and it's 3-0. Oh, my God. What a ball from Alex Gaia. We're 3-0 up against the Swolo. I know they're not the team they were at one point, but they were in Europe not that long ago. And Anderlecht are in Europe virtually every season. I don't think they actually qualified this year either and are struggling under company. But what a ball that is from Gaia. Wonderful first-time finish from Huampi. And we are 3-0 up in the first half against the Swolo. This is something else. Good lord, look at that. What a first half performance. We are at it again. Another free kick for them here. Bogo will whip one across. And I do hate that there's no way to defend these. Because again, as you can always see, they all cluster to the back post. And I have no way of stopping it. Because you can only set... Yeah, maybe we should man mark from free kicks or something. Okay, they've gone 4-3-3 uh, three, three now. So we'll just have to be careful. I'm not going to try and make tactical switches now. Because we're so late into the game. But, ooh. Hello. Toure! And it's 4-0. Yaya Toure gets there. Nilmar with the assist. Well, the tactical switch clearly did not work for them as we create another opportunity. I don't know where the other clear-cut chance was. Because, no, oh, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, Miramon's ball in. It's headed back across, I think, by the defender. But this is great from Nilmar just to whip this nice and tight. And there's Yaya Toure. We're 4-0 up against the Swolo. Seven goals in two matches against two decent teams. Really nice. And there we go. SD Wesker, 4. So Swolo, 0 dominant performance we didn't even create half chances this was pure clear-cut gold Gaia with a goal two for Huampi one for Yaya Torre as well really just excellent in every possible way I'm gonna look very much forward to analyzing this uh, at the start of the next episode but I am very much looking forward to the new season and again I know things are different but still this is a huge sign of things to come for me like it gives us real hope it's athletic Bilbao uh, athletic rather this is going to be very very difficult first game of the season at home it's a home match, so you'd like to feel like we can target getting a point would be a good result for me in that match because they're a decent team, Bilbao. But we'll see. You never know. Uh, unfortunately, Echeta can't play against them because he's on loan, so Polito will have to start. Not the end of the world. I think there's a lot of good stuff. We're going to do a nice analysis of these two matches at the start of that video as well to really give us an idea of what we did right and what we can continue doing into the season. We've conceded one goal in preseason out of all those matches, and it was a long-range belter. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I really have. Smash a like on it if you're enjoying this up to this point. Season starts next episode. That is going to be great. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.